video of the effects of the uh, photo biomodulator device called the Vilite that delivers photons to the scalp, and then also there's a nasal uh, emitter uh, to the brain, and while measuring the EEG. What we see here is just a display. This gentleman at the Vilite uh, website, um, and so you can see what the device looks like. Uh, a volunteer as a clinical psychologist measured his EEG before, during, and after delivery of the photons through this device, and uh, then shared that uh, data uh, to um, members of the NeuroGuide forum, and uh, generally people share data and uh, for research purposes, and that's all uh, is done here. I just wanted to show those that are interested the kinds of changes that happen uh, and are replicable uh, when the by light is turned on. Essentially what we see is in comparison to the baseline period when there is no light is that there's a reduction in power in the lower frequencies and an elevation of current densities at the higher frequencies. In this case, we're looking at uh, three hertz using Loretta and then we're looking at the percent differences between the first two minutes of the light being on and the period between 15 minutes and 17 minutes with the light again on. It's just to see, is there a change during the period that the light is on? And in fact, uh, there is a change. What I found by comparing the first two minutes to uh, the period between five minutes and seven minutes, that there's a reduced power between uh, in the low frequencies and an elevated uh, current density at the higher frequencies. And then if you look at uh, 10 to 12 minutes, that is a continuing linear trend. And when you go all the way up to, in this case, 15 to 17 minutes, there's a continuation of this trend of reduced current density in the lower frequencies and elevated current density in higher frequencies. And in fact, it's somewhat linear as you increase over the period of time of the recording as though there's a cumulative, uh, cumulative aspect to these and the delivery of photons to the brain. I'm sure if you keep it on long enough, it'll asymptote uh, but uh, it goes all the way from about a 12% change uh, up to a 37% change, uh, particularly in the higher frequencies. So this is an example of the uh, low frequency, 3 hertz. Uh, looking at the rendered brain here with Loretta, I'm going to go to 4 hertz. Again, in and, and this case, it's the uh, uh, frontal lobes, the cingulate gyrus, uh, at 11% uh, change. So this one is a 13.8% change, uh, mostly in the uh, left hemisphere, but you got both left and right in the frontal. Uh, and then uh, there's this is only 9% change. You don't see it because I set the threshold at 10%. They're just to show the uh, pixels that uh, change. This is at 12%. That's at 8 hertz in the frontal lobes. Uh, 9 hertz. Again, uh, you can see bilateral frontal. This is the um, cingulate gyrus and the um, middle frontal gyrus, uh, precentral gyrus, uh, problem area 9. Then this is at 10 hertz, 11. It's only a 8% change. Now at uh, 12 hertz, you start to see this elevation of current density now in the right hemisphere. That's an 11% change. Um, just slight changes at 14 hertz, 15. Now at 16 hertz, there's a 18.8% change. In this case, is the fusiform gyrus at the right temporal lobes. And you can see that it's clearly more on the right than the left. There's some reduced uh, current density in the left, but quite large uh, increase in current density at the right at uh, 16 hertz. And there's 17 hertz. That's a 20.7% change, again, in the middle temporal lobe. Uh, the uh, inferior frontal gyrus, probably an area of 45. Uh, as well as the uh, occipital lobe, superior temporal gyrus in this case. 18 hertz, again, you can see elevated current density in the right hemisphere. Uh, in this case, it is at 24.6% uh, change between, this is the difference between the first two minutes with the light on and the period of time at 15 to 17 minutes when the light was on. It was on continuously during that time. This is 24.5%. This is in the uncus of the limbic lobe, inferior temporal gyrus, 
again, you can see there's a superior temporal gyrus. You can see that uh, there is some reduced currents in the, in the top here, in the, uh, this region of the brain, um, which is the motor sensory motor cortex. But there's quite a large elevated current density on the right. So we go to 20 hertz. And again, you see this pattern. There's both bilateral frontal lobes in this case, more on the right than the left. Uh, and there we have 28% uh, change, primarily on the right, a little on the left, but again, mostly on the right, and this is in the frontal lobes. And then at around 22 hertz, we st start to see this unusual pattern or interesting pattern where the right posterior cortex and the middle temporal gyrus and the superior temporal gyrus and inferior uh, parietal lobule show reduced current density, blue, uh, at, at 15 to 17 hertz compared to the very beginning. We can see this bifurcation of the anterior and posterior where there's elevated current density in the uh, frontal lobes and the anterior part of the brain and reduced in the back. <clears throat> at 23 hertz, <clears throat> we see this remaining and that there's a, again, reduced power in the occipital and parietal regions and uh, elevated current densities in the frontal and temporal regions. At 24 hertz, uh, again, this pattern is now persistent. Bilateral frontal and uh, reduced, particularly in the right, but there is also some left uh, diminished, uh, reduced power compared to the first two minutes. So at 15 to 17 minutes, this begins to emerge. At 25 hertz, see it again, and now you have a very small change of reduced power. And the posterior is primarily just elevated uh, current densities in the frontal and temporal lobes at 27 hertz. It continues, again, mostly right hemisphere, although there's some left. And then at 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36 hertz. Uh, in, in this case, there's a 36% change elevated uh, power or current densities uh, as a function of frequency and time. And this is, like I mentioned, a, a continual process. This is at 38 hertz. This is 32% change, the maximum. Uh, and you can see it's bilateral frontal, but especially uh, in the right hemisphere, uh, 39 hertz. It's quite large now. Uh, it is at 35% uh, change. Of the, uh, of the period of time at 15 to 17 minutes of the duration of the, the light being on during that time versus the first two minutes. And then here's 40 hertz. That's at 37.24%. And again, it's quite high. Uh, and so the point of this is, is that there is a persistent uh, and linear uh, change. It's slow. It's a cumulative from the time that the light is turned on uh, to the end of a 20-minute session where there is a reduction in the um, uh, current generated by the brain in the delta frequency range, the lower frequencies. And then there's a elevation of current being generated in, above uh, uh, 15 hertz, uh, all the way up in this case to 40 hertz, uh, in, uh, especially in the right hemisphere and especially in the frontal lobes bilaterally. So I thought this is of interest to see, and uh, it's a quite an interesting method that we're continuing to, continuing to explore in a variety of ways where we turn the light on and then off and on and off, and we see what the effect size is, and then also look at the period of time after the light is terminated uh, to see uh, what the, uh, how the brain changes as it returns to its pre-stimulation uh, state, which takes some time. It's not uh, instantaneous. Uh, there are uh, changes that persist following termination of the line.